What's up guys, welcome back. Today I want to talk about Redux Observable. This is a library that uses RxJS and Redux and kind of mashes the two together. And it's pretty cool and allows you to do basically async programming um, in a different style. And I really like it for calling, uh, making API calls and making network calls with React. Now, the reason I want to talk about today is I was just going through and figuring out how it works and I just scrolled down and I saw they have this uh, React example. Um, and if we open up, we can see, and they just have a big chunk of code here. And it spits out this. And I wanted to show you guys how you can actually take this code that they give you right here and then actually put it on your computer and run it and make it work. Because I don't think it's that clear of how do you take what they have here and actually add it to your project. So I just want to walk you through the process of how I added this to um, my own project and run it from my own computer. So the first thing I did was just open up terminal and I have npm and uh, react and all that jazz already set up. Um, the first thing I did was uh, run create react app and then I called my uh, app ping pong. Um, I already ran that but if you're following along run that now um, and then you should get a little screen that looks like this. Um, and if you don't have Create React app, um, you can install it like this. Um, using npm, you can do a global install of it. But I already have it, so I'm not going to run that. So I'm just going to cd into ping pong. And if we just do a quick look inside, we have all our folders. Now we're going to need a few other packages. So we're going to have to install a few other packages uh, to get this working because we're going to be using... Um, uh, Redux observable and all the stuff that goes along with that. So I like to install packages with yarn um, This is a really cool package uh, Basically manager that Facebook put out and if you don't have it you can install it like this um, It's a lot faster than npm. I like it, but you can install this with npm if you prefer So the first thing I'm gonna do is just init this directory. I'm just gonna keep all the defaults and then I'm gonna say yarn add and then the the dependencies that we're gonna need are uh, Redux observable, so this guy right here. We're going to need Redux, um, Redux, or React and Redux, and then of course RxJS, which you know you don't really, it's hard to tell you need it from here, but um, this relies on RxJS in the background. So we're going to install RxJS, Redux observable, uh, Redux, and React Redux. Now I'll also add this line to uh, the description below if you want to just copy and paste it. And then uh, we'll just download all these packages. With Yarn it's usually pretty quick because Yarn's a fast, it's a fast cheetah. Um, so we just have about that done and cool. So now we can just cd into source and we can start working. So the first thing I'm going to do is when you first make the app with create react app there's some stuff you don't need so I'm just gonna get rid of it I don't need app.css I don't need app test I don't need index.css and I don't need logo so you should be left with two folders in source app and index um, if we can start with index first actually no we'll start with index last um, the first thing is we're gonna come back over here and we're just gonna look at the components so the first thing is right here um, is the, you, these are just hard-coded strings. I'm just going to replace each of the pings and pongs with strings so it's a little easier. Um, we're going to just take um, this first thing right here and this is just an action. So I'm going to create a actions folder and in the actions folder I'm going to create index.js and I'm just going to paste in this action. And I'm going to export it. And I'm just going to wrap this type where it needs to be a string. And that's going to be our action. And then right here we have an epic. So I'm going to create and copy this guy. Create an epic. So I'm going to make a directory called epics. And in epics, I'm going to create an index.js just paste this guy in here and export 
Now, I'm not exporting default because I could see myself adding more ethics or more actions in the future. So I want to keep it flexible. And again, wrap, oops, wrap with a quotations because they're strings now. We're not using the variables. Um, the next thing is a reducer. Just copy this. So we can make a directory called reducers, and then reducers will call create a JS folder called pingpong.js. And we'll paste this in too. This is our reducer. And export. Now this I will export default because this is the only reducer I'm gonna have in here. So export default, and then I'm just gonna jam the function in right here. And then again, just wrap these guys with quotation marks. Okay, so this is our reducer for this. So, so far we should have created three folders, actions, epics, and reducers, and added those in. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a store. So we're gonna copy this guy right here. And we actually only need this right here. So vim store.js. And this is in the uh, on the same level as index.js. We'll create store.js. Um, so change this to import. I've, I haven't seen this syntax before where, see how he does his imports right here? I haven't seen this syntax before. This could work, but I'm going to do it to a more familiar uh, that I'm used to. So get that from Redux. And when, well, yeah, we can just import that from Redux Observable. And we change it, that's what it would look like in a string. Um, and notice how we're using the ping epic and the ping reducer, and let's drop this to a new line. And we can also export this create store. So export default create store. Um, so we need to import reducer in the ping epic. So import ping epic from epics. Now if you've never seen this before, um, this is a cool way of how importing works. Um, notice how in our epics, so if I just cd into epics, or not only in the cd, I'll just ls epics. Notice in epics we have index.js, but and here I just did import dot epics and do slash index. Um, you don't need to do that. It'll automatically grab that index.js folder for us. And so it, this is a kind of a cleaner, shorter to write, and I like it. It looks cleaner. And we're going to do the same thing for our, uh, well, not for a reducer, uh, so for our actions later. So ping reducer. And this was a, a default. So we can get rid of that. And that's from our reducers. That's from ping, uh, ping pong. Okay, so we just imported our epic and our reducer. Uh, our epic we use right here and create middleware, and then a reducer right here. And we're actually going to be using this uh, create store um, in our index. So that's why we're exporting it here. Okay, so we're going to make a components folder. Components, and we're going to just move. We have app.js in the outer scope. We're going to move it into components, and then we're going to change up stuff with app.js. So now this is our app right here. You can copy this. So we don't need this whole class extends component part, and we don't need a SVG or the CSS. Uh, we're just going to import connect from React Redux. And then the rest of this is good. We just have it right in here. Um, and then the last part is just our index page. So we can just copy this little guy right here. Paste them in, get rid of this. Don't need our CSS anymore. Uh, our app is in our components folder. 
So we need to prefix this. Um, and then we just need to grab our store, which we know is store from, and then the store file that we just made. All right, this should be good. Let's give this a run. <clears throat> so in another terminal, or you can do it in the same terminal, but I'm gonna open a new terminal. And then I'm in that folder. I'm just gonna say npm start to start up the server. <clears throat> and we'll see if we get any errors. And we did, oh, we forgot to import provider. If we just uh, notice we're using the provider uh, tag right there, or a component I mean. So we just need to import that provider from, I believe it's from Redux. We'll see if it likes it. Component, uh, so app component is, oh. So it looks like the, it likes this. Um, if we go back though, I forgot to import some things into go to components.app.js. Um, notice that down here we're using ping. So we actually need to import that from our action. So import ping from, and we need to go up a directory and then actions. Um, and then is there another one that we need to import? No, so let's just see, we have an error. Delay is not a function, action of type. Oh, and there's one last thing. If you go back to the index folder, sorry, index, uh, file, we just need to import rxjs. That way it, uh, if we go into our epics here, notice how we're using some rxjs functions, delay map to, in our index folder, we need to import it so it can use it. Okay, so, and I think provider is from React Redux, then if this does not work. Yep. So now if we click start pinging, it goes from true to false, um, exactly how we would think it would work. Okay, so we now have this running on our own computer and we can now modify it and add stuff to it and uh, continue creating the application that we want. So you can go on and add things to this and use this as a template if you like. Um, if you're interested in learning more about uh, kind of how this works, because this, if you're not f too familiar with RxJS, I'm just going to explain real quick uh, how what what's happening in this code. So the first thing is uh, that might be a little weird is you see import RxJS. This is just grabbing all the RxJS uh, functions and basically letting your whole application use them. Um, so you'll see this later as I showed in your epics that they can use them. And so we're grabbing it. This should look familiar if you're familiar with React and Redux. We're just creating a provider and we're hooking up the uh, Redux store that we created in our store file. Um, so I'll show that and then we're just rendering the app. Okay, so in our store function, we configure the Redux store. Uh, now the thing that might look a little different is we're just adding some middleware. This allows um, the ping epic to basically listen for actions. So what's gonna happen here is every time I click, and we'll just go into components, every time I click this button here, um, it's going to call the ping action, um, which we created. Now notice, and let's just, let's get the ping. Okay, so when I click on this button, it's gonna call this ping action. The ping action is this thing right here that we created. Um, and when it when this is clicked, it'll dispatch an action to the Redux uh, reducers. Now, we know this because that's what, uh, when you see this connect right here, the second one here, this is adding it to the props. So if we just right click, inspect and react, Just go, we can click down, we can see in our app, you notice that there's a function called ping in the props. And that's because we connected right here, the ping function that we got from actions down here. We're connecting that uh, 
to the props right here. So that way, when we click on the button, we can call ping, and that's how it's getting it here. And notice it's getting, it's grabbing ping from the props right here. That's what this decomposition is. Okay, so it dispatches an action, then what? After this action is dispatched, it'll go into the reducers, the ping pong reducer, um, and then it'll dispatch a ping, and now is pinging is true. And we'll see that as we click, when we click this, the action is dispatched, and now this is true. Now after an action goes through here, what it will do is it'll actually go through uh, our epic. So after it goes through the reducer, and this is very important, this is after it goes through the reducer, it then comes through this epic. Um, it comes, the action is of type ping, so this is true. So then it waits uh, basically a, uh, one second, and then uh, it then dot map to type pong. This might look kind of foreign, but basically what it's doing is it's issuing a new action called pong. So a new action called pong will go through again. And now if we go to our reducer, when pong comes, uh, is pinging is now false. And that's why you click this, it dispatches the action, it becomes true, it waits one second, it dispatches another action, it goes to the reducer and changes this to false. So that's how that is working, how all of these are connected. And so how it wires up, um, this reducer and this uh, epic, how these are all talking to each other, is when you create the store right here, notice how we have the ping epic, we created some middleware, and then we create our store, we added both the ping reducer and the middleware itself, so that all this stuff is happening. So I hope that makes more sense, um, a little bit more sense at least, and RxJS is, uh, this, I didn't go too much over how this worked right here, but I hope this makes more sense how Redux Observable kind of handles uh, these things and I hope this example the ping-ponging you kind of understand how it was put all together And you can try changing things and breaking it and trying to understand how this example is working So I hope it helps and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd be happy to help